We are responsible for our own self-defense. We have law enforcement that does a great job of enforcing laws, but sometimes they're not there. And I know that uh, when we had a break-in a few years ago, a couple of years ago, uh, it was 40 minutes before law enforcement got to the house. And at that time, I even told them I thought there was somebody still in the house. And it has a lot to do with budget controls. And to be honest with you guys, I don't want a policeman on every corner. <laughs> Uh, so, what we're going to look at today is a weapons bag. This is your self-defense Minuteman bag. And I actually did a review on this bag a couple of years ago, and I called it the anti-terrorist bag. But these bags are not necessarily for terrorists, they're for whatever enemy, foreign and domestic. But there are enemies to your self-defense right here. And guys, if if you're not into self-defense and you know you think that having an AR-15 uh, is overkill, then you probably don't want to watch this video. This is to address men and women who take responsibility for their safety and for their families very seriously. And in the world we live in, which it seems to have kind of turned upside down, uh, I think now is the best time to make sure that you have your gear squared away. So we're gonna go through a weapons bag, things that keep all of your gear together in one location. And if you ever need it, you can grab it and go. If you're at home and you need it, you know where it is. Now guys, I started out with a bag that is not really any, it's not really a name brand. It's a Vism, which V-I-S-M. I found this on eBay. I think uh, NC Star also makes a version of this. It just happens to be the, the just the great, perfect size for what I was looking for. I wanted something compact and easy to transport, but I also wanted to be able to take care of all the needs that I have. Uh, one of the things I'm going to mention right up front is there is no plate carrier in here. I have that in my loadout bag. And guys, this is just what, I, this is my philosophy. If you have something different, please leave it in the comments below. That's what they're for. And uh, there's a lot of information that passes in the comments that really helps everyone. Uh, this comes in a number of different colors. Again, it's not you know super high quality i think these were like 35 dollars on ebay uh, it has a nice grab handle it's very well stitched with webbing that runs all the way around it to give it some security the zippers seem to be holding up fine and uh, box x stitching in a lot of places but still again it's not super super high quality it does have a shoulder strap and there are eyelets d-rings on either side to be able to do that uh, it is pretty heavy and um you know, but it has held up for me. I don't carry this around a lot. So, uh, and I think really if you have a loadout bag or something like this, it's not something that you will be carrying around a lot. Um, then I have a, there's an ID patch right here, an ID pocket, and I just happen to have one of the Team Suits patches right here. So we're gonna get into the bag. Double zippers. And it opens up all the way. Now, as you can see, the main compartment, it's about three inches deep right here. It is padded, and there are some compartments. You can kind of configure this the way you want to. I mean, there are some uh, dividers that go in here, and there's molly and Velcro attachments. Uh, and this is the big main compartment of the bag. And we also have two mesh pockets in the top for incidentals or other things that you don't want rolling around in your bag but we're gonna look at the main compartment first. Now I do keep a ball cap in here, and so it's just laying on top, but uh, the sun and things like that, it's always good to have a cap. Now one thing that's very important in this kind of bag is a trauma kit, not just a first aid kit, but something that is a trauma kit. This is the uh, Coyote Tactical Solutions. It's a really small, low drag, but yet it has everything you need with this Velcro patch. Uh, keeping that medical patch on here for people to know. If you know your blood type, that would also be what had good to have in here. Not just for yourself, but for others. Uh, we're gonna open this up. One of the big things you'll want to have is a tourniquet. Uh, that's really important, uh, nitro gloves. And there's compression gauze and chest seals, and there's an Israeli bandage right here and some tape. But just a good trauma kit. There are a number of different ones out on the market. The reason I like this one is because it is just so compact. It fits well in the bag. Uh, another really good source for trauma kits is my good friend Skinny Medic. And um, I'll have the links down below. He does a great trauma kit where he even has it in a uh, vacuum sealed together. And that might also be a great option. 
Of course, I have my firearm, my sidearm. I do have a concealed carry, but I wanted to have something that is full size. This is the Glock 17. It is a Gen 4, and um, you know I have some. I have an extra magazine in here, of course, the 17 round magazine. But a good solid pistol uh, that you know you really can depend on is important. Um, I keep a Glock 26 or another subcompact pistol on me. So having a full-size handgun, uh, you know, to me just really is nice and it fits well in here. And I have one of the U.S. Grunt Gear uh, holsters. Um, he's doing a really good job. And this is just a, um, like a carbon fiber look with the tech locks. And it works very well for my system. And, of course, it fits very nicely in the holster. My extra magazines for my pistol are tucked away right here with my other magazines for my rifle. And uh, I actually have two extra magazines. And we're going to look at this belt, but I have two pouches uh, for the magazines to be able to carry on my belt. Of course, really, the whole purpose for this is to have a good rifle. Uh, that is, there's a huge advantage of having a rifle over a handgun. In fact, the old adage is, I have a handgun so I can fight my way to my rifle. Uh, this is a uh, Odenworks free float handguard, uh, 223 wild barrel. It's actually 14 and a half inches or 14 inches, and then I have a muzzle brake pin and welded onto the, the barrel. And that makes it a legal length of 16 inch minimum, but I've got the, the muzzle brake counts for it. So that makes it as small as you can do without having SBR. And bit, one of the big things about an SBR is you can't go across state lines with an SBR unless you have permission and this is one rifle that I do take uh, on when we travel and so this is something that you want to make sure that you are legal uh, it does have the inbus sights and one of the things that I like I have a good optic on here this is the Trigicon ACOG but this is with the ACSS reticle which to me is one of the best reticles on the market uh, these are available at primary arms I would if you're looking for an ACOG this is the one to get uh, it has the green fiber optic here, but the reticle system in this is second to none, in my opinion. Uh, Primary Arms does a lot of different ACSS reticles for their scopes, but Trigicon joined with uh, Primary Arms for this particular uh, scope. Now here is my lower. It is secured, just like the upper was, and I have some Velcro keepers here. Pull that loose. Uh, what I have here... And to make this as small as possible, I have one of the Law Tactical folding stock adapters. And this really helps to get this really small into a really compact package. Uh, I have one of the Hogue uh, Overmold uh, stocks, which I like. And I have the G10 grip for the AR-15 that's also from Hogue. Uh, and with this trigger guard. Uh, I do have an aftermarket trigger in here. And uh, this is a CMMG uh, trigger. Uh, CMMG makes great triggers. Uh, I do have my adapters for my slings on here, and that is something you do not need to forget. Um, having adapters for your sling and having a good sling uh, is just, it's just sensible because you may have to carry your rifle. And then all I need to do is to open it up, pop my pins, insert my adapter. It does a little differently because of the Law Tactical adapter. Lock it in, and I'm ready to go. And of course, I have the Team Suits lower right here. Of course, that's just what I, I like, and I know we did a run of these a while back. Laser Work did a great job on this, and again, I'll have the information for that down below as well. The scope mount on here is a LaRue Tactical, and it is a QD system. I like that because I can take my scope on and off if I need to get to my backup iron sights. But your rifle is the heart of this bag. But you need to have a really solid rifle system in your bag, whatever you choose. An AK-47 does well, uh, and there are others. But the uh, AR-15, to me, for my go-to rifle, is what is my choice. Now, on my rifle, I do have one of the Streamlight TLR-1s, and this is the HL. And again, having that light, especially in darkness, uh, you have a lot of capability with your light. One element that you do not need to overlook is something to carry your magazines. Now we have three 30 round magazines in here. Uh, these are hex mags and they are fully loaded, ready to go. 
But then I have my belt, and this is a tactical belt. It's a heavy weave, and this is also from US Grunt Gear. I have the Cobra buckles, and I have my mag pouches. I've got two mag pouches, one for the rifle, and the other two magazines go here, and then again, my pistol mags go right here. A good, solid, sturdy belt is important to carry your gear. But here we have the magazines inserted into the belt, and this belt's ready to go. Okay, having a good quality thick, fixed blade knife with a full tang, uh, this is a, a this is my favorite knife. This is the FFS or Fight for Survival knife by Up Armored Knives. And Will Welling does a great job. Makes the uh, sheaths as well. Even has fire starting right here. This attached to the sheath, and it has the soft interior on the Kydex. But uh, this is not a cheap knife, but it is excellent. In fact, I did a full review and a big test on this knife, and it came through with shining colors. I mean, I beat the fire out of this knife. Uh, a lot of times we'll put cheap knives tacked away, you know, in our gear. Uh, having a good solid knife that you can depend on is important, and uh, I definitely recommend this over a folder. Your flashlight, and here we have a, a, a nice little Maxpedition sheath. And then we have the flashlight right here. This is a Calaris XT11S. What I really like about this light, beside the fact that it is like super bright as the sun, is that this is rechargeable. It does take 18650s, but I have my charging cable uh, that can hook up to USB. And so I've always got charging, recharging capability plus extra batteries. This can go right on my belt system without any trouble. I do have a multi-tool and I have it in this uh, G-Code Scorpion soft shell mag holder. And um, here I have a uh, SOG power assist, SOG power assist multiplier. Uh, this is a big solid multi, you know, multi-tool and it fits right in here. But this is actually made for magazines, but I've got a little clip here and I can put this on my belt. Now I do have a bandana here and this is great for a lot of different uses. In fact, I've got a video on this on my Sensible Prepper channel uh, that has like 50 uses for a bandana. And there are just so many things that this is a really important element to have in your bag. Uh, it does keep the sweat off and it, keep, it can't keep it out of your eyes. It can wipe down your face. It can cover your face in dust and be somewhat of a, um, you know, a shield against dust and debris. So uh, just a lot of things about this that are just great to have in your bag. And I have it wrapped up around this Surefire. And this is the uh, 300, the X300 Ultra. Very bright light. And this goes on my Glock pistol. Uh, but to pack it in here, I needed to remove it. And two, I may or may not need the light uh, if I need the pistol. So I've got this ready to go. I've got one of the Beecham Tactical slings. And this is with Paracord. Uh, and it has the Cryptek webbing. This is an excellent... Uh, sling and again you need a sling for your rifle and so this is something that's great I'm actually working on a review right now and I've got my QD system already hooked up to it I can attach it directly to my rifle at the QD points I have the Magpul technical gloves great gloves very sturdy but what I really like about these is that you can use touch screen with these finger pads and so if you need to get to something, you don't have to take your glove off, uh, whether it's your phone or computer or whatever it is. Uh, this just gives you a lot of options, but they're just great gloves in themselves. Also have some Howard Light electronic hearing protection. And one of the things I love about this, number one, it does uh, keep the noise from damaging your ears, especially gunfire. But you can turn these on and you can amplify sound. And that is huge. In a critical situation, uh, you can actually hear better than the human ear. And these things are just built like tanks. And they're not too, too expensive. So I really like Howard Lights. I've got a good friend of mine that's been using these for over 20 years. And for a tactical situation, these are a must. Much more over earplugs. Now one thing that I carry with me everywhere is a fire kit. And this little Maxpedition EDC bag, it has a com just a complete fire kit with different ways to make fire, plus tinder, and I have my Vaseline with cotton balls, have some waterproof matches, striker, have a knife, uh, have a Fresnel lens, more cotton balls back here. Uh, but this is redundancy with making fire. And fire, there's a lot of things about fire uh, that help us to survive. So I just keep these with me. Is it something that I'm going to need in a tactical situation? Maybe not, maybe so. But having fire, to me, is worth the wait. 
Now again, I have my mesh pocket. You can kind of see some of the items that you have. And uh, I'm just going to pull all these out and we're going to take a look at them. Now first thing, I'm a little redundant on my medical and my trauma. Uh, this is an extra uh, tourniquet, cat tourniquet. And then I have another Israeli bandage because, you know, you may need it for someone else. So having this, to me, I have room for it and this is important. Also, I have one of the Zebra Light headlamps. Uh, being able to go hands-free is really good. I mean, that's a, a definitely a, a great advantage and you can put this on your head, strap it on, and then be able to, to see different things that you need to see without using your hands. And then I have a small little Tasco. This is a, a 12 by 25 uh, pair of binoculars, uh, giving you a little bit of advantage, especially for things that are at a distance. And also the spool tool. Uh, these are great for organizing paracord. I know I've got paracord in my sling, but I don't want to necessarily use that unless I have to. And with the spool tool, this is great. And I've been using these for a long time. Uh, this actually has fire cord wrapped around it, so if I need to, I've got a redundant fire source. Or, again, I can just wrap it up and uh, use it for, for different things for cordage. And next, we're going to go into our second pouch. And of course, you can start to see this. This is more toward electronics. In the second pouch, we have some iPro. And one of the reasons why I chose clear iPro is I typically carry some sunglasses that I use for shooting uh, with me. But at night, having clear is, is just a no-brainer. I mean, you can't see with the dark, so go with clear. Uh, I also have a backup battery charger, and uh, this has been a really good, this is eBoot. I've done a review on this a while back. It's solar, and it's been sitting in this pack for a while, and it still has a lot of charge to it. Uh, this is for my Calaris XT11. I have my cord here, and I have the original pouch. I could use this on the belt if I wanted to. Uh, and then I have my strap for the bag. And then here I have extra batteries to be able to go not only to my weapons lights, but also to my main flashlight. And really, I probably would throw in another set of batteries uh, just for good measure. Of course, having a plate carrier can be the difference between life and death. And so while the plate carrier does not fit in the bag, this is going to be a separate item that you carry along with your bag if you feel like you need it. This is from Highcom Security. Uh, we have G-Code. Uh, mag pouches. This is the Scorpion uh, soft shell. Great, uh, very adjustable uh, mag pouches. And then we have AR500 armor inside two plate carriers and it's the shooter's cut curved with the protective anti-spalling uh, material on it. And so we can actually outfit this even more, but just to show you, this is the plate carrier. So guys, here we have all the contents laid out. And this is you know, a way to transport your pistol and your magazines with your knife and flashlight, things like that, right here in place. Uh, the Coyote Tactical Solutions Trauma Kit, I could have thrown that on the belt, and that would go on the belt typically, I just didn't do it. Uh, but you can see how everything's laid out, even have my sling attached. Uh, so this is, to me, bare essentials for a serious situation that you feel like you may have to defend your life. Am I saying you're going to have to defend your life? Am I saying that this is necessary? You know, not necessarily, but as we've all seen, things are getting more and more crazy. Uh, the rule of law is starting to lose its grip. And, uh, you know, just recently we had two, uh, and I think it was in Des Moines, Iowa, two uh, police officers were executed in their vehicles uh, within, you know, just a little time. So there's a lot of stuff that's kind of crazy going on. And to me, be sensible and be prepared. Hopefully, you'll never have to use anything like this. But if you're already going out to the range and you're shooting, you have your ARs, you have extra magazines, get it prepared that you have it in a safe location ready to go. And if you need to transport it, you've got everything you need. You don't have to run around and start looking for it. And that's one of the big reasons why I put this together in the first place, is that everything is in one location. And if anything does happen, I'm ready. If nothing happens, I'm good to go. Now this is obviously assuming that you have a rifle, uh, and this is obviously assuming that you have an extra rifle to pack away. But you can have all this gear put in there and then throw in your AR-15 and your pistol uh, right before you need to go because typically you need to know where those are anyway. And have all the essentials set aside, ready, packed to go. And then if you need to, just add guns and head out. To me, one of the biggest uses that I have for this bag, though, is when I'm traveling. That tends to be the biggest time that I want to pack this up and when I'm going. 
and again as if you're traveling from state to state you need to double check your laws the one thing you want to do is to stay legal uh, that's what we're trying to do here is to be free and freedom means that you're not counted a felon uh, you can lose your rights for a firearm you can lose uh, your voting rights and a lot of other things plus your time you can spend time in jail and a financial burden so guys just make sure that you're legal because that's really what our country is based on rule of law stay within the law if it's a law that uh, is just a, oppressive then we need to get involved with the legislation and we need to push for the right things but guys the big thing is is to get involved with gun rights groups the NRA is the biggest and please aside from your differences the NRA is the best chance we have we do there are a lot of other great gun rights organizations and you can get involved in those as well I'm a member of a number of different organizations so it's important to be active and to be fighting the good fight with the legislation so you don't have to fight the good fight uh, with your firearm except for those who are breaking the law and that's the reason we carry this now down in the description below I'll have a list of all the items that are in the bag and of course you need to set your bag up according to your preferences your needs and what you think uh, doesn't necessarily mean you have to have an AR-15 rifle or a Glock 17 but it does mean that you have the means for self-defense guys there's a lot of you that watch from other countries that you're not allowed to have firearms for self-defense you'll have to tailor your bag to what you feel you need in a defensive situation. You know, there's the old saying, I'd rather be tried by 12 than carried by six. And if you, you and your family are in mortal danger, you need to stand up and you need to defend yourself and your family. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. Guys, here are all the contents laid out. Uh, I could also put the uh, uh, Able Bot King. Okay. It may be an SK, well, and giving you a little anonym. And <laughs> we have a responsibility for our own defense, for our own self defense. Guys, we live in a republic, and that means that we live in a constitutional republic. And this uh, intruder... So instead of just adding water, just add your AR-15 and your Glock pistol.